Alright, what is up, my lovely people? I figured before I try, before I try to play some Marvel and potentially anger myself and want to kill myself and hurt myself and drive off a fucking bridge by playing Marvel Online, I would discuss my first impressions of Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasm. It's been out for what, three days now? In Japan, in the arcades? And I'm gonna get to that in a moment. But, first, I must begin every Blaze Blue video with some token tagger hate. So, let's get this token tagger hate out of the way. What the fuck is up with his atomic collider now? I'm like, it starts up the same way, has the same properties and shit. You know, he grabs him, he slams him into the ground, and then it gets weird. I've only seen one match with Tager. I'm kind of trying to stay away uh, from information and stuff, so I'll get into why in a moment after this. But, um... So I don't know if I got this correctly. I may seem kind of ignorant on certain things. Uh, and that is because, like I said, I've been trying to kind of avoid stuff. Uh, information and all that. I, like, I kind of watched a few day one videos. And that was pretty much it. I'm kind of, like I said, I'm trying to avoid it. And I'll explain why in a moment. But, it seems like instead of doing what it used to do. Where he grabs them, he bounces them. They bounce up to about head height. And then they have a hard knockdown. Now he just grabs them and fucking bounces them into the stratosphere. They pop up a hella high, and it looks silly as fuck. I mean, it, the, the only reaction I had when I first saw that was, what the fuck just happened? So it seems like instead of having that bounce into the hard knockdown, and then you do you know, an atomic collider to draw them back in, they're magnetized, blah, 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 all that shit, it looks like the, you have to ha find some kind of follow-up to do during that bounce, because I don't think it causes that hard knockdown anymore. So I'm assuming maybe you could, like, do a, um, uh, like, a jumping chain maybe after that into something. I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to say, that shit looks silly as hell. And I, oh my god, what the fuck? It looks weird and I don't like it. One other thing that I don't like that I'm going to get out of the way first. The sound effects. They're grating. They shouldn't be. They should not... You shouldn't... Sound effects should be there, but you should have to pay special attention to truly notice them. But these are just like slapping you in the face louder than everything else, and the only thing I could think of when I'm like watching gameplay and hearing those the new sound effects that they're doing for whatever reason was that it's like a low-budget martial arts movie. Where, like, they're cracking celery for, you know, like, the bone-breaking shit. That kind of sound effect. It just, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound good. I don't like it. So that's my other complaints. So, now, why I've been avoiding information. See, I think Arc System Works does themselves a disservice by releasing their games in the arcade, like, half a year or more prior to a console release. And the reason why is that there is a substantial amount of hype in fighting games that results from the release of that fighting game and that initial rush to learn, to figure out setups, to figure out combos, figure out new characters, whatever, all that shit. I still remember Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 when that shit was first coming out. And, you know, some people were managing to get their hands on early copies, whether it was because of, you know, the whole mom and pop store, getting them like three days early and selling them or what you know what however they got it and being like yo we're gonna have some prior to release day and i was on that like i was so hyped to go there try out nova try out iron fist try out strider etc etc all that stuff i was thrilled and that aspect because of how they handle this is lost to everybody but the japanese arcade scene and because of that I feel like, number one, it gives a lot of people time where initially they were hyped for it, they wanted to play it, and then they just see more and more and more of it, and they're just kind of like, eh. And I think I'm going to pass on this game. I'll just keep playing Street Fighter. Or I'll just keep playing Marvel. Or I'll just keep playing Persona. Whatever. It gives them enough time to lose that initial release day hype that otherwise would have sold a copy. It also, once it finally gets here... Now we no longer have that hype rush. Now it is, oh shit, I need to go home and I need to practice this dude's setups and this dude's combos and I need to catch up to them. 
And A, I feel like that's just bad overall because it's not really hype. It's just I, I want to catch up to this person's level. And B, I feel like that kind of kills the imaginative side. The side where you're trying to think of things for yourself, where you're trying to find things, discover things for yourself. You are stuck in somebody else's mold of their character. That like, you know, they're whatever, like the highest PSR ranking of X character. And you see them like, oh, they're obviously playing this character correctly. I want to play it like them. And that kind of kills the imaginative side where you try to discover how you play the character, not how they play the character, and you're just trying to copy their shit. I feel like that's a bad thing overall, and I wish they wouldn't do it. Because I know, like I said, I'm trying to avoid information for that reason. Because I know, in every single game, with Extend, with CS2, I was watching gameplay of all of it, and I was hype as hell when it first came out. And then, over the months, it just slowly started to dwindle. It's like, you know, okay, they've already discovered everything. I don't really care anymore. Like, I did not even know. Ex I was, the hype was killed so far. Uh, like, I was so hyped to play Relius and Extend. And that got killed so quickly. Because I'm just watching all this gameplay. I'm watching all this shit that other people get to do. And we don't have access to yet. And then by the time it even came out, I didn't even know it was out. It was like a week after, and somebody was like, "Hey, are you getting extended?" I was like, uh, 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 "I don't, I don't know. Is it out? Oh, it's out. Oh, oh." And that was, I mean, that's bad because I was so hyped for Relius. For those of you that were back around when I was still playing Blaze Blue and talking about Blaze Blue, etc., I was hyped for Relius. I hella wanted to play that character, and then Extend actually came out, and I was just like, I didn't even know, <laughs> didn't even register on my radar. So I feel like this whole. Arcade release, then six months later doing a console release, even if it is slightly updated. Uh, you know, like maybe they do balance tweaks. I hear they they have uh, a couple new characters planned. Like I guess there's a different version of Subaki. I'm not positive on that. That's just something I've heard. Um, I mean, even though they have that shit, it's still we've been watching gameplay all this time, and we're that's all we get is access to gameplay and guessing shit, and it's like. That's no fun. I want to play the game. I want to be able to play the game and watch it. Like, I still watch Marvel streams. I still watch Marvel videos. And I still have access to play it. Whereas with Blaze Blue, it's like... Like I said, by the time it comes out here... I'm kind of, My hype is dead for it. I don't really care anymore. It's like, I have just watched the progression of low-level gameplay to mid-level gameplay, to high-level gameplay. I just watched that entire discovery uh, aspect play out right in front of my eyes, and now I just I don't really care anymore. Because now it's like, I want to be as good as this dude, but I'm not as good as this dude, and it's frustrating. I want to be as good as this dude. and But obviously, you know, they have a six, seven-month lead on you. So obviously you're not going to get there in a week, but it's still like, I don't even feel like I'm doing anything. I'm making no progress, blah, blah, blah. So anyway... That's one little thing that I don't particularly like about Arc System Works' is a game plan in terms of what they doing. Um, other than that, I mean, it's looking good. The new characters all look good. Uh, Bullet is looking hella good. It looks like Bullet's going to be the most uh, popular new character out, out of everything I've seen. Like, I've seen plenty of people playing her. I have seen, like, six combo, six different combo videos for her. I haven't seen one for Imani, and I've seen one for Asriel. And he looks like, oh, man, I'm going to get into Asriel in a moment. But Bullet definitely looks like she's going to be, like, the new character, the popular new character, the one that's going to get played the most. I haven't seen a single gameplay anything of Imani. Like, I haven't seen shit. Other than, like, a trailer that shows off, like, some of his, uh like, attacks with his shawl, I don't know if it's a shawl or what, scarf, something, I don't know, it looks like Rose, basically, like, Rose is ultra, except those are his moves, um, so let me, I'm just trying to, I don't really understand a lot of how things work, like, how the burst mechanic works anymore, do you get a burst, see, this is all shit that I should just look up, but, like, do you get either a burst per round, or an overdrive per round, is that how that works, like, from what I understand, Overdrive builds up, like, the lower the health you have, the longer it lasts. But the icon for Overdrive is where the burst icon is. 
and I don't see any kind of burst icon anywhere. So is it just one or the other? You can't do both in a round? I think, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, Bullet's looking good. Bullet actually looks like a character I would have fun with, but if she's going to be overly popular, I never, li I never like playing overly popular stuff. That's kind of why, like, I think that's kind of why I kind of drifted off from Marvel for a little bit was because of Combo Fiend and Infrit picking up Nova Spencer. That combo just became so common that I was just like, yeah, you know, I kind of want to play somebody else, but I don't have the time to learn somebody else, but it's kind of boring playing this team and playing mirror matches against people. And I think that's kind of why it killed me. You know, I don't really like playing a popular, often used character. Um... So hopefully Azriel doesn't end up blowing up and everybody loves him. <laughs> Cross my fingers. He might, though, because he is Nova. I mean, not gameplay-wise, but just like, dude hits like a grown-ass man. Dude talks like a grown-ass man. Dude is a grown-ass man. And I like that. I'm loving it right now. Uh, and I'm definitely, it seems like, my one worry about the character was with how his drive shit works. Where how if he hits you in a certain spot, it puts that icon there. And, like, you can build up those icons to do things. From what I understand, it's just you hit them in that area, wherever the icon is, uh, whichever attack you hit them with, puts an icon in the area that that attack hit the first time you hit them. And then the second time, if you hit them again, and you can do this mid-combo, it causes more hit stun, which just basically allows for longer combos. So, and the one thing I was worried about was that he was going to be similar to Labrys or something, where, like, he has to get hits to build up to an average level. And he was just going to be shitty, like, starting out, which it doesn't look like. I mean, obviously, there's I have no concept of where tiers are, if there even are tiers yet. Like I said, it's only been three days. I don't know if Asriel's ass. I don't know if he's good. I have only seen one player, and I'm going to get into that part in a minute because it was fucking hilarious and sad. Um, but, yeah, that's the, the one thing I was worried about was that, that he would be, like, a shit character, and then you get hits with his drive, and then he slowly builds up to being a good character. Whereas, you know, like, you have other characters like Ragna or Jin, who are always good characters. Um, and it doesn't, it seems like that worry was unfounded, which I am happy about. And then you have, alright, so the Asriel player. <laughs> so I guess he has this move that causes this ridiculous crumple. It's very similar so, like, what Nova gets off of his human rocket punch heavy off of a standing person or, like, She-Hulk's clothesline, that kind of crumple. And he hit it. And, you know what? Was it the guard break? That's another thing, actually. It might have been the guard break. But anyway, so he gets it, and this dude just walks up, and I'm sitting there like, oh, my God, he's about to do something crazy. It's going to be some, like, 5,000 damage combo. It's going to be great. And then he purple throws him. <laughs> and the dude texts it. I was just like, God damn it. This guy, that was the only Asriel player I've seen so far, and it was, yeah, not exactly the highest of quality. But, from what I hear, the reason everybody's meter bar is segmented now is that every character has a guard crush. Where there are no primers anymore, you can just guard crush somebody, which I am worried about. That seems worrying. Because there are there have always been characters in this game that do ridiculous damage without needing meter and can easily build up 25 meter to use another guard crush in a combo. So, like, I mean, like I said, I am ignorant. I don't know how this works. But if you can just use a guard crush whenever you have 25 meter, like, what's to stop somebody from guard crush, full combo, into a knockdown, forcing them to reset in a favorable position where you can hit them with a meaty or something and then going into another guard crush. Like, and then you force a burst to get back into neutral. But then what if you have another guard crush? So, I don't know if the guard crush is limited at all or something. I'm hoping it is. Because if it's just 25 meter and you can do it and guard crush somebody, I wonder if Barrier blocks it. That would make sense if Barrier would block it. See, this is, this is why I probably should not have been, like, talking about this kind of thing, because this is all shit I could easily look up and figure out instead of, like, sitting here trying to figure it out myself. But, uh, anyway, so I'll just move right along. It is looking, um, I mean, it's definitely looking different. It actually looks on just, like, a, uh, 
an artistic level. It actually looks different to me. I don't know if I'm the only one, but everything looks brighter. Even, I mean, especially the new stages. There's that one stage, which is like, in the background, you have all these like, fucking bright colored honeycomb kind of layout in the back. And I hate that level. I've seen it like twice. And both times I was like, oh my god, that level's terrible. Like, it draws attention to itself, which shouldn't happen. Like, if you want to create a detailed, good-looking level, cool. But you should have to focus on the level to pay attention to it. You shouldn't, it should not be trying to get your focus and take focus away from the match, which I feel like that stage does. Um, but other than that, I mean, like I said, it's... It's only been three days. I've been trying to stick away from it so far right now. The only thing I was really looking for was Asriel to see how he looks, and he's looking good. Bullet is looking like a good new character. Uh, I haven't seen shit from Amani, like I said, but dude's a cross-dresser, so whatever. Who cares about you? <laughs> you picked the wrong lifestyle, homie! Gonna get some hate for that one. I don't care if you're a cross-dresser. Feel free. But I'm not gonna put... If they put you in a fighting game, I'm not gonna play you. Just throwing that out there. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's... They've definitely made some big, risky changes to the gameplay that I haven't really made before. Like, they've never really made this fundamental, like, changing of the game system before. The closest thing, uh, the closest difference, I guess, would be... How did bursts work? And see, like, didn't you just, you just got one burst around, and that was it, right? Whereas, you know, in, like, CS, you had two bursts... You had one available to you, and then if you lost a round, you, the second one became available. I think that's how it worked. Anyway, regardless, it's been a while since they have done any kind of big changes like this, and it, they're risky changes. So I hope they pay off for them. I hope the game ends up being quality. I hope the game ends up being good. The one thing that, I mean, I haven't seen it yet, I haven't, because there hasn't been any really high-level gameplay of it yet. The one thing that I'm always worried about with any Arc System Works game is the length of the combos because some you know you got characters like Lychee, Makoto, Noel who in the past uh, have just had these combos that last for like 15, 20, 30 seconds and it's ridiculous and I hate that. That's a big I mean besides the fact that Persona 4 Arena just died on the 360 like barely anybody plays it on the 360 anymore period. Besides that I was already getting a little like Every time I had to watch a Mitsuru combo, just like, man, fuck, or an Aegis combo, or anything, like, any kind of Fatal Counter combo in our System Works game, it was just a pain in the ass to watch. Because they're so long. It's the same thing in Marvel. Like, I hate Zero Lightning loops. I hate Virgil Sword loops. They're just, I hate Doom TACs. Because they take so damn long, and you're just, you're, if you're on the wrong end of them, which I always am because I don't play those characters. You're just sitting there the entire time like, man, this is some bullshit. I want to be doing something else. Can I just go, like, get some lunch right now or something? This is some, this is stupid. Can I just wait until somebody else is playing that's not using these characters? It's, it's not fun to be on the receiving end of that. And anyway, and I know there must be more people out there because I don't particularly like watching it either. Any of that stuff, any of the incredibly long combos. I don't like watching it. I can't be alone in that. And Arc System Works is one of definitely one of the worst in having those long ass combos. I mean, like I said, King of Fighters is damn near my ideal game because they really don't. I mean, they have HD combos, yes, but the you can possibly maybe get one of those around. I mean, a match, sometimes two, maybe unlikely, but that's it. It's not like oh, with Virgil. <laughs> You do it, and then by the time you get another hit, you're going to have the meter available to do it again. You can just do it on all three characters, or Zero Lightning Loop, or whatever. Where, like, it's just always available and always potentially doable. And honestly, I don't really like HD combos anyway. Like, if there was one thing I could change, I would get rid of the HD combos. I would not get rid of the HD meter itself, because being able to cancel a special move into a special move at the cost of HD meter, I feel like is a good mechanic. That, it, that, you know, promotes skill, promotes uh, meter conservation, etc., etc. HD combos, however, I just do not like long combos like that. I don't. And Arc System Works, it's just like every combo is an HD combo. They always, like, they last forever if you manage to hit confirm it correctly. 
And that's the one thing I'm always worried about and I think always ends up killing my interest in the game is that if I want to learn a new character, I'm going to have to learn like seven of those combos depending on character specific shit, whether it's counter hit or a fatal counter or whatever, plus being on the receiving end of them. I'm just like, man, fuck this game. And so that's the one thing, again, that I have to be paying attention to that I'm worried about is that there will be those combos and there will be that that'll kill my interest in the game. I hope it doesn't. But, I mean, like I said, earlier in the, earlier in the movie, in the video, you know, six months, seven months until it's going to come stateside. More, if you're in Europe, sorry. <laughs> that really sucks. Y'all still haven't even gotten Persona 4 Arena yet. That is absurd. That is just like that. I understand. I understand. Before, when it was just like, oh, it's going to be a month and a half or two, like... Okay, it sucks, but it's not worth raging over. Now, it's it's been worth raging over for the past month or so. They don't even have an estimated date. It's just, eh, we don't know. Maybe. Probably not. But, I mean, it's... I don't know. I think, I think it's a bad business model for them to do. I do think it loses them sales. Because people have... Uh, people move on. They watch all this gameplay... And then eventually they're just like, you know, hey, you know, this is coming out now, so I'm gonna watch this instead. And then they forget about Blaze Blue. And I think I just I think that's a bad thing. Uh, but I'm, obviously I don't run the company. I don't get to make those decisions. But we'll see. Hopefully, uh, it's incredibly well balanced. Every character is amazing, and the game is amazing, and the netcode is amazing, and everybody plays amazingly, and it's amazingly fun and whatnot. Crossing my fingers. But that was just some kind of, those were just, I guess, my thoughts. Just in case any of you cared. I don't know why you would, but just in case. So that's that. Now I'm going to try and play some Marvel. And I'm going to try being the operative word. If you don't see a video in the next day and a half or so, you'll know I tried and I failed, as per usual.